Welcome to Texas on Tap, episode 28. I'm Brandon Strange, alongside Charlie Palillo and Josh Jordan. Jordan, follow them on X at Palillo and at Josh Jordan 975. Jack Brame is producing. To support this channel, all you have to do is hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. That's it. We really do appreciate it. Links to the audio version of this podcast are in the description. Guys, early in the season, we circled this game on our calendars because we thought we could get a Stroud-Watson matchup with possible playoff implications. We even speculated on whether this game could be flexed into prime time. Uh, the playoff implications remain, but we know at least one of those QBs will not be answering the bell as of this recording. We don't know yet whether CJ will be available on Sunday. But even without Watson, the Browns come into NRG with a 9-5 and record. The old saying, uh, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Well, Fortune has favored on the Browns all season, uh, but Vegas does give a slight edge to the Texans here. On the flip side, we saw Case Keenum lead the Texans to victory uh, in Tennessee. Um, whether it's uh, if it's Stroud, they'll have a much better opportunity. Uh, what do you? How do you like their chances against uh, those Browns defense, which has really been their staple all season? Uh, Browns defense is top five defense. If Keenum is the quarterback again, the Texans aren't going to score very many points offensively. If Stroud is the quarterback, well, hopefully they're able to score enough points offensively. The Browns' defense is better uh, than the Texans' offense. But turn that inside out, and certainly in the world of what have you done for me lately, uh, the Browns' offense right now is not good. They're on their fourth starting quarterback, and it's 73-year-old Joe Flacco. And I know they've put some numbers up, but they had to struggle and pull it out against the Bears. Their offensive line is ravaged right now. They have one healthy starter in what they anticipated being their offensive line. That rings a bell of familiarity. Uh, Nick Chubb, their stud running back, has been gone for virtually the whole season. Uh, Sean Watson, we know. Um, so, you know, the Texans' defense has a chance to, I think, uh, dictate uh, against the Browns' offense, right? Flacco doesn't give you any sort of running threat. Uh, Will Levis did some for Tennessee, and it wasn't enough for the Titans' offense to get going. So I would anticipate a low-scoring, close game. For sure. With, with Flacco, there he is throwing it a ton. You know, when you, when we came into this year, we thought the Browns run the ball, you know, that, that would be their deal. But Flacco is flinging it. They still got Amari Cooper. So there's some challenges. They're the top defense when it comes to yards against, only giving up about 261 per game. So they're going to have their hands full. But for me, I think the – even more than Stroud, I think one of the big keys to this game is going to be Nico Collins. Is he going to be able to go? He was out running around doing drills and kind of running sprints, and it looked like he might give it a go before the actives and actives came out against Tennessee. So if Nico was that close to maybe playing after another week, maybe he's ready to go against the Browns. And then we saw Noah Brown bounce back in a big way against the Titans. So if CJ's got Noah Brown and Nico and Singletary continues to do what he's doing, we saw Schultz come back and make an impact. I feel a lot better as opposed to that Jets game. I feel like there's a lot more weapons for CJ Stroud or Keenum to take advantage with. Well, the Browns have the 11th best run defense in the league. How do you like Devin Singletary's chances of being able to replicate his breakout performance in Tennessee? Well, he had back-to-back uh, big carry 100-yard games earlier in the season. So that, to me, diminishes the concern. Is uh, there a little bit of juice out of the legs coming off the 26-carry, 131-yard uh, tour de force uh, in Nashville? Um, you know, uh, the Browns, I don't think you, you think of their front as the fearsome foursome, uh, you know, or the steel curtain. I mean, Miles Garrett's an absolute stud and a problem in the, in the past game as well as an edge setter. Um, but you know, if Singletary is going to be the predominant back when, when he gets the bulk of the work, he's been pretty effective. So, uh, let's say, I think he tops Derek Henry's 16 carries for nine yards without difficulty. I'll bet under 131, but if he goes, say, for 20 carries, 85 yards, that's a good workable day, and presumably you're out of second and long and giving your offense a chance. For sure, and I'd like to see them continue throwing Singletary the ball. You got good results with that against the Titans. I think you can continue to do that. It's just a kind of an, an extension of the running game. Just check it down. Sometimes those are the easiest plays, and you don't always have to push it down the field. I will say, not only are they first in yards against, but also passing yards against. So according to the numbers, it's a little easier to run on them than to throw on them. They're fifth in interceptions. So... You know, they, they can turn you over a little bit. Denzel Ward came back last week. They're they're great corner. So th that's something to keep an eye on. They do have somebody in the passing game that can limit you. But Texans spread it around. And 
I think you got to go back to Singletary. You can't just throw the ball, you know, with, with the pass rush coming from the Browns. You're going to have to mix it up. It's something about this game is giving me a funny feeling. A lot of these uh, things that we're talking about feel very similar to what we were talking about going into the Jets game. Low scoring game, uh, you know, may, maybe a, an ugly game. Uh, talking about a team going up against a team that's offense is uh, not heralded, but has a decent defense. Uh, granted, the Browns defense is much better than the Jets defense. But on the defensive side of the ball uh, for the Texans, you have to feel pretty good coming out of Sunday's win over the Titans, where Houston really clamped down in that second half. Their run defense has been especially potent currently at number seven. Where do you see some of these uh, advantages of the Texans defense? Charlie, you mentioned you think they will contain or control the game or at least have the potential to. Where do you see some of those advantages on display on Sunday? Well, if Joe Flacco is going to be a high volume passer, he's Joe Flacco, right? He's a mistake waiting to happen. And he's been a nice comeback story, signed off the street, practice squad now playing at age 38. But like Case Keenum with the Texans, you certainly wouldn't want him to be a long-term uh, term starter over a stretch of a season. Well, Flacco's their guy. Um, he's not especially mobile. John Grenard, who's making himself an absolute fortune with the season that he's having, they're going up against the Browns' a battered and bruised offensive line. Uh, if Will Anderson is able to uh, get back to give you uh, the dual pass rush threat, um, I don't see the Browns topping 20 points here. Can the Texans get there against Cleveland's defense? If so, they can't clinch a playoff spot by beating the Browns, but they get to 9-6 and six and add a tiebreaker over the Browns to go with those they already hold over the uh, – the, well, forget the Steelers. They're dead. But, uh, but the Bengals – and the Broncos are probably dead. And now with Trevor Lawrence, frankly, playing a garbage first half against the Ravens and then being in concussion protocol, they're going to Tampa. The division title could well be there to be taken in the last game of the season. Texans at the Colts. We can look ahead a little bit. Texans eye on the ball. If there was any getting caught looking past Carolina, looking past the Jets, the Browns are nine and five and just put up their defensive highlight tape and the Texans need to be focused on their business. I think the game being at home is huge. Christmas Eve, home game. We've seen the Texans struggle on the road. They lost to the Falcons. They lost to the Panthers, the Jets game. We're seeing a pattern here. They they play a lot better at home. One thing that gave me some encouragement from the Titans game was I was thinking maybe Will Anderson was the secret to the run game getting fixed this season because you know they were dead last last year and right near it a couple of years before that. And they're really good against the run. We didn't have Will Anderson against the Titans and they still shut down Derrick Henry. So that means part of it, I think is scheme and, and some of the, you know, other players, the Texans have, you know, picked up, especially in the middle with Rankins and some of those other guys, they've been terrific. So I'm encouraged by that. I think they're going to, they're going to have their opportunities. We talked about it with Flacco, his three starts, 44 passing attempts, 45 passing attempts, 44 passing attempts. So they're going to have some real opportunities here to get him on the ground. And like Charlie said, you know, he's not going to scamper around and be super elusive or anything like that at, at this late stage in his career. So that should help them for sure going into this matchup. Two good defenses, probably a lot of punts. You have to like the Texans uh, on special teams. Uh, let's get some predictions in here. Uh, guys, uh, give me your uh, final score predictions. Uh, Fairbairn back is a huge difference maker for me. Uh, as a tandem, he and Johnston are an elite one-two. Uh, Cam Johnston is a, a field position changer. Um, they've been winning nothing but close games for three months now. I'll stick to that script and go Texans 20, Browns 16. I'll go 24-20, Texans. Nice. All right. Well, that's going to be it for episode 28 of Texans on Tap. We're going to be back uh, next week, hopefully talking about a win, talking about a two-game win streak. Thanks for listening. Take care and go Texans. Go Texans.